Pawn to e4 was my initiating move in the state final chess game. The tournament winner would be crowned Duke or Duchess of pre-elementary school chess. The game intensified. Bishop to e5. Rook to h7. Queen to d8. Checkmate. Chess is an intellectual sport, one that challenges minds. Players memorize openings, attempting to get into the thoughts of their opponents, and then try to identify a pattern crucial for victory. During that fateful game, I found the pattern first. Ever since I was little, I've reduced complex systems to their simplest forms. This may not be an obvious talent, like playing the violin, but it's the way my mind works. It lets me make, other, make connections that many other people often cannot. For example, I've recognized patterns while playing basketball. A player's future's position in relation to mine, the repeating nature of a call play, an intercepted basketball from its path. In the classroom, while studying the Fibonacci series, I started noticing how patterns can be cleanly expressed through mathematics. One, one, two, three, five, and so on. The pattern here is that each subsequent number is the sum of the two before, clearly. In high school, I began understanding how mathematics is synonymous with the science patterns, a collection of everyday, um, everyday algorithms with everyday applications. Derivatives, a simple repeating pattern of the power, quotient, and chain rules, help me solve for the average rate in kinetics problems. The geometric series helped produce a spending multiplier equation within macroeconomics. Through mathematics, I began to see that there was a pattern in everything. A few years ago, when I was in upstate New York, a butterfly landed on my arm. The butterfly flaunted its wings as if it was trying to woo me. It did. The blue dot on the left mirrored the one on the right. The royal purple seemed to be com within command with its powerful voice. The hint of green on the tip of each wing displayed the butterfly's wealth. Its wings were beautiful. It had symmetry. It had patterns. When my friends took me surfing for the first time, I looked for the patterns in the waves. Out at sea, waves tend to be chaotic, but when they reach land, they form sets of repeating waves, the ideal time for a surfer to catch that gnarly wave. I waited for the set. One friend took off on the first wave. The next friend caught the second one. The third wave was mine. I began paddling hard. Stroke one, stroke two, stroke five, stroke nine. The wave grew in size. I thought to myself, keep paddling. You can do this, one stroke after another, almost there. Now get up on the board. I couldn't do it. I felt out of tune. I could not keep enough to the patterns of my stroke. I bailed. But now let's see if we can try to create our own pattern. Can everyone do me a favor and synchronize your clapping? All right, so um, the point here is that everyone's claps began to synchronize after some time. It actually didn't occur to me that you're going to increase your frequency, which was also the same occurrence that was done by Steven Shorgatz of Cornell University, an academic who inspired my research on the pattern of synchronization. Synchronization is the operation of two um, or more things occurring at the same time or rate. It is how distinct systems can coordinate their behavior to act as one uniform whole. Synchronization creates a source of order within the complexity of everyday life. Each individual has an internal system that can lock with one another if the attraction reaches a certain point of strength, allowing the two to coordinate in unison. The natural tendencies for single oscillators to synchronize can be enigmatic, but it's also quite abundant in nature. Think of a planet as it rotates around the sun. In this case, the planet is considered an oscillator. Understanding the core of synchronization and its applications may help us make a better understand a world that is increasingly complex. Within nature, synchronization is ubiquitous. It can occur among gatherings of animals such as starlings, herring, and fireflies. In a school of fish, there are few rules that create synchrony. First, the creatures are only aware of their nearest neighbors. Second, the creatures line up in one direction. Third, they are attracted to one another but maintain a certain distance between them. These three rules work to create near-perfect synchronization between creatures. However, when a predator comes, a disruption occurs and fish tend to be chaotic, but eventually they'll resync. The same goes for a flock of birds. Inanimate objects have a different way of synchronizing. These objects have coupled oscillators that interact with each other to synchronize. The attraction between oscillators are called couple forces. Couple forces are when the force of one oscillator interacts with the force of another. 
Interacting by internal wall vibrations, pendulum clocks will become uniformly rhythmic within a certain amount of time. In this case, both oscillators are able to synchronize so that it matches the other, becoming a coupled oscillator. Within our, brain, our body and even brain cells, mathematicians and physicists are continuing to discover different oscillators and systems. Contrast to the nearest neighbor interactions that occur in a school of fish or a flock of birds, cells in a human body interact with every other similar cell, also known as all-to-all -all interactions. To illustrate, human pacemaking cells interact in unison to create a synotrial node, which is essential to the synchronization of the heartbeat and to keep us alive. Within cognitive science, neuro oscillations that resemble uncoupled and desynchronized states are seen in victims with dementia. Beginning to understand the significance of synchronization led me to ponder a couple of questions. What are the underlying principles that cause this wonderment of collective behavior? Can understanding synchronization and collective behavior help discover the workings of some complex systems that once seemed unfathomable? For instance, can identifying a pattern help explain ga how galaxies interact? Or is the universe expanding at random? Curious, I began doing some research. Researchers have studied the underpinnings of synchronization in great depth, and many mathematical models were generated in attempts to confirm this phenomenon. Using these models, researchers have been analyzing nonlinear interactions and their relation to the connection of oscillators. A nonlinear system is a system in which the output and input are not directly proportional to each other. In other words, the output of the system can be unpredictable to the given input. For my research, I chose to study the Kirimoto model, a mathematical model that allows for more exact and less chaotic solutions. The Kuramoto equation represents all-to-all -all oscillator interactions as seen in many inanimate objects and biological systems. This equation is the Kuramoto model in its most general form. Many of you are probably thinking, how the heck is that simplified? Don't worry, I'll try not to bore you with too many mathematical details. When I began my research, I quickly found a pattern. To visualize, imagine three pendulums as oscillators that are separated equidistantly. For each number of pendulums, I found that no matter what the frequencies are, the coupling strength will be the same. Frequencies is the number of oscillators per, oscillations per second. The coupling strength establishes a fourth attraction between the pendulums, ultimately causing them to synchronize. For three pendulums, the increase in coupling strength for each increase in frequency distance is 0.17. Upon identifying this mathematical pattern, I knew there had to be some sort of relationship. I became eager to find out more. After deriving equations, maximizing functions, and manipulating other calculus computations, I had finally found a pattern between the number of oscillators and coupling strength needed for a system of all-to-all -all interactions to become synchronized. This is the equation I produced. Graphing the relationship between the calculated coupling strength and number of oscillators for all-to-all -all interactions, I noticed the coupling strength needed for a system to become synchronized approached a horizontal asymptote of 2 over pi. This was derived by Kuramoto himself. For the nearest neighbor interactions, or the interactions done by a school of fish or a flock of birds, I found that as more oscillators or more fish enter a system, the coupling strength needed for that system to synchronize becomes increasingly larger. As the number of oscillators or fish approaches infinity, synchronization cannot occur. Validate my research and its pattern. Going back to the question proposed earlier on whether synchrony and collective behavior can help discover the workings of some complex systems, I believe that it can. Within cognitive science, synchronization is present within epilepsy, and a hyperactive state can be an onset of a seizure. To solve this hyperactive state, can an implantable chip that detects the onset of hypersynchronization be invented? Maybe so. Could my equation be proved beneficial in the invention of this chip? Possibly. Hypothetically, once the chip identifies that the coupling strength is approaching the critical point of hypersynchronization, it would shock the brain out of this locked state, desynchronizing it. In addition, this chip could help possibly catalyze other implantable chips in different medical fields such as deep brain stimulation therapy, Parkinson's disease. All in all, the pattern of synchronization affords me a sense of unification and understanding. In a world once seeming so complex and chaotic, I can finally accept the idea of how even the most bewildering relationships could be solved through a simplistic system of patterns. From what you have learned today, I want you to remember one thing. 
There is a pattern in everything. Synchronization is my pattern. What is yours? Thank you.